Hey, how's it going today? Top of the morning to you. This is a uh, little Heath kit uh, line voltage monitor. Uh, basically what they call an extended voltmeter or expanded voltmeter. Um, this is from a friend of mine. His name's John. I call him John the Hurry. Um, John's one of those people that's over scheduled. He's always got something to do and he's always late and I don't know, he kind of seems a bit disorganized sometimes. Anyway, he got a hold of this, thought it would be fun to fix. It only has about, mm, I don't know, counting the case, probably about a dozen moving parts. Maybe more. A minute, maybe, maybe more though. Anyway, he was too busy to stop by and let me look at it. <laughs> anyway, you see how that went. He did have time to call me and pester me on the phone though. And so I looked the schematic up and tried to troubleshoot it over the phone. Um, like a lot of things, uh, repairing things is only good as the information you gather. And when he started out working on this, um, <clears throat> one of the things that's all interesting is I think this might be a factory made one or a later version than the schematic I had. The schematic I had didn't show this uh, under here is a fuse, uh, which is actually a pretty good... Uh, little add-on, uh, you know, the, the manual doesn't show that. So is there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Yeah, there's probably about 15 parts here. So since John's not an electronic whiz, he didn't see this fuse and he couldn't explain it to me. So we're testing around there and he says, well, there's this black part there. What's that? Is that a capacitor? And I says, well, Finally, he, he took a picture of it with his phone and text, or emailed it to me real quick. And I said, well, that's a fuse. So he, I had him test it. It's open. It's open for a reason. Uh, he jumpered around it with a clip lead. I assume pretty similar to this. And we went merrily testing on its way. Um, also, it had this cap in there, this giant cap. He replaced it with this smaller cap and... It did a little bit of a sketchy job, but it's not mine. <sighs> anyway, he said that this resistor smelled hot. So I did a little tracing and figured, well, this cap might be going bad. And the, and the meter wouldn't move. It would just sit there like this. But in the cowl position, it would move. So it told me something was going on. So anyway, what had happened was um, this cap is leaking badly and I had him carefully touch it with his finger and he said it was getting warm. So well, that's, that's bad, you need to replace it. The minute he replaced it, this resistor stopped getting so hot, but it still got a little bit warm. And he said that the, the meter jumped up, but as he left it plugged in, it slowly was drifting down further and further. And I had him check a couple other things, and finally he lost patience and said, well, I'll just bring it by, I can't fix it. Well, you can fix it, you just need to keep at it a little bit. Anyway, he gave up. Well, what I found was, I found this resistor. And, uh, basically there's a, a Zener diode in there that's a reference. It's like about 16.1 volts. And he was correct. As the thing stayed on longer, it drifted down further and further and further and further. And I also noticed that he horribly misadjusted it to even get it to show up. So it told me something was amiss, but there's not enough moving parts in there to be bad. Well, I did a little snooping and started watching that Zener diode. And I noticed that A, this resistor next to it, and B, the Zener diode, were getting pretty warm. So just for fun, I took this out of circuit. I just clipped it open. This is supposed to be a 10K resistor, 2 watt resistor. It doesn't look like 10K. It's barely even 1K, so it's supplying too much current to that Zener diode, and the diode's overheating and getting grumpy. I replaced it, just stuck that 10K resistor in there. It doesn't have to be real specific. All the precision resistors are over there. This is just a reference, and now it seems to work just fine. So basically, in a nutshell, he had three problems. He had a blown fuse, he had a capacitor that was leaking badly, and then he had a resistor that was horribly out of tolerance. Probably what happened is, I don't know. Well, one thing's for sure, that uh, this cap probably blew the fuse. 
again, that fuse is a pretty good add-on. I don't know why that resistor would be so horribly out of tolerance. Maybe it's just been... Since it's 2 watt, it obviously gets pretty warm. Probably just a crummy carbon comp resistor. I might go back in and rebuild the thing a little bit more, but it does seem to track. Since it's about 121 volts. Extended voltmeters are pretty useful. The range starts at 90 and goes to 140. And this thing is sensitive enough that you can actually sit and watch it and see the line voltage actually fluctuate. There's a couple other places that make line voltage monitors. They're not too fancy. A person probably could whip one together easily enough. This thing's probably sensitive enough to see, I don't know, lights come on in the room. And just shut the lights off. Or I might see the refrigerator kick in. Uh, another one of these I've seen is the RCA branded one, the, the Viz brand. It's kind of interesting because it's actually got a socket on the side over here and you use it as a through line type thing which is kind of clever. If you have a very accurate, you pretty much need a voltmeter. Variacs aren't terribly accurate. The numbering on them is a bit crude. <sighs> anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. Since John threw this out, literally drove by and threw it out the window in a bag. <laughs> He's kind of a busy person. Oh well, that's more fun for me and maybe more fun for my folks on YouTube. So there you go, there's the IM-103 foliage monitor, or line monitor. It's also got a nice little tab in the back to mount it with. Anyway, take it easy. Have a good day.